Yeah. I've learned that when I start prayer, praying, God starts nurturing me. I want you to get this. He nurtures me. I receive correction from whoever I need to do so. It dramatically helps me in my life. If I may receive it from any of you, it helps me. As I share it with you, it helps me. If I'm praying, I can handle it, receive it, and apply it, and do what I need to do because I had an encounter with God. It's, my heart is not false. It's right with God. It's building a foundation and it's growing and allowing me to really be like Jesus and not like myself. Prayer is getting me out of the shell and allowing me to be like Christ, Jesus. Thank you. So I was thinking about this today. I said, Lord, I appreciate Moses. Being consistent with prayer. Tim Plex. He prayed and asked God for what he needed to do. And every time he went back to God, God gave him another thing. You go tell Pharaoh. But he had to pray for it. This is what you tell Pharaoh. It just didn't take 10 plagues. It took 11 plagues for Pharaoh to understand what's going on. It was the, the Red Sea that parted. All right, you took my firstborn son. Get out of here. Take care of me. yours and get out of here. The devil gets mad when you're praying. I'm going to tell you that now. Because he sees you. You're starting to get things that you've lost. And everything starts to come back and more. And he gets mad. And so the enemy would get mad like Pharaoh got mad. And he came back after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel have seen the mighty miracle and seen what God done. At times, because we're not praying, we get worried. And so what happens is the children of Israel said, Moses, did you bring us out here to die? As Elijah said, the brook the book, the book is dried up. You brought me out here to die? Feeling nothing more than feelings coming. What's going on here? They had feelings instead of they didn't go into the natural act of what they know to do to pray. And when that prayer gets in order, something happens. So Moses looked at his people here in the complaint, and what did he do? He turned away from them and he looked at heaven and he prayed, he extended his rod, he started praying. The Lord told him, Extend that rod you got out of your hand. Get that thing out there. I want to show Manila miracle. I don't know why they keep complaining and whining, but mm, I'm so mad. They're worried about I bring them out, and they're worried about all those 600 chariots and all those men, 600,000 men coming at them. They're scared to death because they're afraid they're going to die. Moses prayed again. Here's the 11th responsibility that God gives the children of because Moses prayed. The Red Sea opens up. The 11th plague now comes to order. And they are able to go across. But one thing I want you to understand that as you pray, there's benefits from that. Because as Moses prayed, and not just that it allowed the children of Israel to get across, but the enemy always tries to benefit from the prayer. Tries to benefit from your blessing and take away from you. Tries to go with you and tries to... So he's thinking, man, it was good enough for them, it was good enough for me. But when he gets in the middle of your prayer, oh boy, trouble is coming to the devil. Pharaoh's army got in the middle of the prayer. Moses put his arms down. And that rod went down. And we know the story. The water swallowed them up. They got in Moses' prayer. When you get into your prayer, it swallows up the enemy, destroys the enemy, and helps you understand. So right then and there, Children of Israel should have learned right then and there, knowing that only 11 days later, with 11 plagues and 11 days later, they could have went to the promised land. But just because we're led by feelings and being upset and having an attitude, God would not allow them to turn left. They had to keep going right around the mountain and keep had to go around the canyons and to the valleys and all the things they had to go to. Instead of taking 11 days and living by faith and thanking God for 11 days, they could have went right to the place at Jordan River where they should have been because of Moses' prayed. And told them that God said you'd lead to the promised land. But because of the people not praying. They had to be in the wilderness for 40 years. And sometimes we go through situations in life. that will take a lot longer than what it's supposed to. Because of a lack of prayer. God showed me something. As I will try to close this out today. And help you understand. What's so dramatic is he showed me, he says, when you pray, you become mature 
Can you become like me? Can you get a heart like I had? And it's not your own heart that acts up like the children of Israel's heart did, because they always had those mood swings. God is a tender, He's a contender of your prayer. I want you to get this. A contender of your prayer. He contends and fights for you. If you keep praying, He'll knock every devil back to hell. If you keep praying, He'll continually destroy the works of the enemy. It's an everyday affair. It's not once a week. So tell my kids, one day of prayer helps keep the devil away. Scripture day helps keep the devil away. Everything in God is in prayer because it keeps the enemy away from you. When I'm praying... Here's what it does. It helps me to encounter the heart of God. To know His heart. Once I get His heart, I'm able to build a foundation upon the heart of God. This is powerful. I'm able to grow. Jesus prayed for us each and every day of His life as He intercedes for us that we will have the heart of God. When He was in the garden, He prayed, Father, not my will, but Thy will be done because I want the heart of the Father to be in me. It's always His will, not my own. I submit to that. Someday we're waiting for the wedding day. We're the bridegroom. He loves us. He prays for us every day. And if we meet Him with that prayer, we will get to see prayers answered and miracles formed and signs and wonders will follow you. And you'll really start appreciating your prayer life and loving God. It becomes the addiction. With closing thoughts, as Paul said, Listen to this in Romans 8, 5. Paul tells us that we have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out to you. Abba, Father. In Hebrew, the term is endearment. It means Papa. Now let's speak in English here in America. Daddy. I hated the day and my kids were getting old enough to say, Oh, Dad. Oh, I didn't like that at all. I like those days. And they'd say, Roy, I know you remember these days. And Roy's a lot older than I am, so it's a lot longer ago. But they used to say, Daddy, 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 Daddy. Don't you miss those days? Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. When that prayer life is in order, it's always Daddy. It's always I love you. It's always the culture and the endearment of my heart. I've learned to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. It's bringing me to the place I get to fall in love all over again with God. And when I say Papa, in the Hebrew it says it still maintains the respect. This is the Hebrew. It still remains the respect. But it cultivates and brings culture to the fact to know and to understand that when you cry out, our daddy or our papa is going to listen to us and hear us and love us. The reason why our world is in such a mess is because maybe daddy didn't do his job what he was supposed to do and didn't learn how to talk to the daddy. You know what I'm saying? Didn't know, learn how to respond to the daddy in heaven and wasn't able to share what daddy taught him. Sometimes things get messed up that way. This is a revelation that God wants to share with you. Is to know that when you're praying, you're going to have an encounter with God. And you're never going to be the same. As I continue this, and, and as we go on, we are, we are literally going to learn. Listen. How to fast... And pray. I got some people in this church now who are willing to commit with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I've been talking to different people. We're going to start fasting on Mondays. To allow God to understand that, that fasting means putting yourself in a position to freely receive more from God. The fundamental basics of praying daily is connecting men, God's hearts, to be able to change your friends, your family, yourself, and the world that's around you. I really want to get into this because I want to show you that we're going to build the foundation here at Eagle Heart Connection to help us understand that we got to get in position and we're not going to be able to change the city, we're not going to be able to change our lives and the world around us. The Lord spoke to me.